Bezalel and Aholiab, Lessons from Lesser Knowns, week number two. Hey, welcome to Stone of Help, and we are here on week number two of Lessons from Lesser Knowns. We're going to talk about two guys today by the name of Bezalel and Aholiab. Now, their story is found in Exodus chapter 31, starting at verse 1. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all kinds of craftsmanship to create artistic designs for work in gold and silver and in bronze and in the cutting of stones for settings and in the carving of wood so that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And behold, I myself have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Achizamach of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all who are skillful, I have put skill, so that they may make everything that I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the ark of testimony, the atoning cover that is on it, and all the furniture of the tent, the table and its utensils, uh, the pure gold lampstand with all of its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, the woven garments as well, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons with which to carry out their priesthood, the anointing oil also, and the fragrant incense for the holy place. They are to make them according to everything that I have commanded you. Now this is God giving directions uh, for the tabernacle, the very first meeting place between God and man. So here's what he did. God gave the components of the tabernacle to Moses. However, it was Bezalel and Aholiab, two guys we just don't hear a lot about. God equipped these two guys, these two quote-unquote lesser knowns, to actually carry out the work of building the tabernacle. In today's language, we probably could say it this way, Bezalel would have been the foreman of the tabernacle and, and Aholiab his right-hand guy. So what kind of lessons can we learn from these two guys, it's Bezalel and Aholiab? Number one is, is in verse two, God called Bezalel by name. Amen. And, and uh, that's interesting because he is a, uh, he's just not known by a whole lot of folks. You know, we're talking about him today and a lot of people probably didn't even realize who he was. But God knows his name, right? There's not, there's not a such thing as a lesser known in God's eyes. Let me just say it that way. Let me, Isaiah was talking of Israel when he, he said this. He said, I have called thee by name, thou art mine. But I'm almost certain to I believe that also applies to the believer. And the reason I believe that is because John chapter 10 declares that the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. Aren't you glad that he knows your name? The second thing that I learned here is God filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God. Now, this phrase is used very sparingly in the Old Testament. Now, unlike the New Testament, you know, once the Holy Spirit came, that's it's used often, and today it's used often. But in the Old Testament, you didn't hear that much. You did hear it some, but usually it was reserved for individuals in the roles of prophet, priest, or king. But here, it, it's used of a craftsman. As a matter of fact, uh, it, it, we would call him a blue-collar worker or, or an everyday Joe. We would just call him. We we would call him somebody like me or you. Just he was just average. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this right here was the first time that we read of somebody being filled with the Spirit of God, and it happened to be a craftsman. I'm going to tell you, let me bring that to where we're living at today, friend. Uh, the, God filling people with His Holy Spirit, it's not reserved for pastors or teachers or evangelists or, or certain denomination. He wants to fill everybody with His Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what that word there, all, means in the, in the Greek? It means all. Amen. He's still filling today. Now, this third thing right here, this, I believe, is, is the big message, biggest message that I think that uh, we learn from these, these two guys. Is it, it has to do with that right there. They both worked with their hands. Bezalel's work 
was in gold, silver, brass, stones, timber. Uh, that's found in Exodus chapter 31. Later in Exodus 35, he's described as an engraver, a designer, embroiderer, a weaver. And, and then you get to Exodus 37, and you'll see where Bezalel constructed the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. This is the very place where the presence of God would dwell one time a year. Just constructed by Bezalel, this, this guy that we don't hear a lot about. Think about that. Now, Aholiab's work was, a, he was an engraver. He was a cunning workman. He was an embroiderer also. That's in Exodus 38. So listen, they both worked with their hands. Psalm 90 verse 17 in the ESV says it this way, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The Bible says this also, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. Now, you remember in the, in the New Testament when the man had the withered hand and Jesus healed him? Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Now, we're not talking about a miracle here, but I do believe Jesus is still saying the same thing to you and me. I think he's saying the same thing that he said to these guys, how they use their hand. I think he's saying, stretch forth your hand because there's a job to do, friend. Listen, this thing is wrapping up. Okay, this is this is uh, uh, he's there's a harvest that needs to come in and it's going to take my hands. It's going to take your hands to do the work of God. We can learn this lesson from Bezalel and Aholiab. So we're going to begin to wrap up here. And I'm just going to once kind of like I did last week, kind of show you just how important these guys are in the eyes of God. So when we think about the tabernacle, we've all heard of. Well, I shouldn't say we all have because I'm a tabernacle guy, so I have. I, I love to study the tabernacle, but many have heard of the tabernacle. I mean, we recognize the furnishings and, and we certainly recognize the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat because this is the place where God dwelt. We do re realize the tabernacle is the very first meeting place between God and man. And, and we do understand this, that, that it, was, it was God that spoke to Moses and gave Moses the instruction uh, for the tabernacle. But what we need to notice is that God specifically chose these two guys that we just don't hear a whole lot about to construct the very first dwelling place. Just think about that for a minute. Let that sink in because I promise you something. He's still using lesser knowns today to do big things. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you guys for joining me. And always remember that the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knows them that trust in him. Thank you all and God bless you.